Hello guys. In this episode I'm gonna present you almost the same result I was uh, talking about in the previous uh, videos with the bike check of uh, my Polar X which is uh, let's say a cheap bike with uh, entry level parts or just uh, let's say old good stuff today i uh, pushed on uh, an hour let's say record with this bike which uh, came up about 28 kilometers per hour average speed 27.8 as you see in my opinion it's uh, much more than uh, i expected or i felt during uh, pedaling so i had a a target let's say which was uh, one hour record let's say with another bike which is a 29er not a 26er an xc bike cross country for who doesn't know uh, let's say medium or uh, yeah, let's say medium uh, quality stuff on that bike. And uh, that one was uh, 28.2, I think, with an empty, 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 empty uh, park, lake, let's say lake, because I lap the lake. Of course, uh, it was just just a little bit more uh, traffic today, but uh, let's say it's very similar in the results. Not that much wind. I think today is a little bit more wind. As you can see, the flag right there. I also felt in some sections a little bit too much um, resistance and also i felt riding too slow it was very slow also one relative which i know since i had uh, first replacement of chain to this bike this is almost six years ago he works at uh, a bike shop in my neighborhood and he just a few days ago made clear in my mind that this bike is not a dirt bike all right because it has a derailleur dirt bikes are uh, single speed are made for tricks jumps blah 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 but this is actually a four cross bike which uh, is really interesting because i didn't knew what uh, four cross is and uh, even if this name didn't told me too much I knew about uh, those videos on YouTube with uh, four dudes that rode downhill in the same time racing on 26 and uh, yeah, it, it was just great. That period was just few years, I think four, five, six years and then it ended, sadly. Now we have to watch crappy gravel bike race 
XCO, XC, Red Bull Rampage, I don't know, and a lot of crap, in my opinion. Mega Valanche is one of the best races, um, which held up uh, in the past, let's say, five years, which are really, really, really tough and uh, on my taste let's say, even if I don't practice. But, uh, yeah, this is just a little bit of history about that bike right there, that beauty, which is, let's say, compact, agile, agile bike. Really, really, really nimble twitchy but uh, when you ride it you don't feel as fast as on a 29er which is faster keeps momentum better on straight let's say not on the curves or even on the curve but if we compare the times which I have here, and this is uh, the reason I do this, not uh, because uh, of my impressions or something like this, but I'm actually really surprised on this 27.8. It is incredible, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think this is the real BPM. I felt like... Uh, I don't want to say, I was really tired in uh, the middle and the end of the race. The start was slower than uh, on my 29er. And uh, I don't think 98 is uh, relevant. But the speed, oh yeah, that's it, I almost uh, completed five entire uh, laps which uh, the last time I think I completed with a start from uh, other section here is complete circle last time I think I started from uh, oh I'm so confused oh yeah Last time I started from here, I went straight up to the lake and I ended the lap around here. Today I started here, as you can see, somehow precise, and end up around here. So it's a little bit of uh, difference in terms of distance but in terms of speed you could just say that is almost the same crap so today was uh, 4 August scrolling back 7 days this is it 28.2 as you can see I started here and I ended up here not in the lake but uh, as you can see based on the actual time difference because there are uh, seven seconds difference. This is 108, not 101. We can say that uh, maybe the average speed is around 28 point, ah, it's, it's here. Uh, not 28.2, 28.14. So the basic maths tell us that uh, the difference is 
34 with a zero before which is almost nothing I almost expected a 25-ish even though I made uh, a previous Urban with 26.2 or something like this but anyway to just keep it in the almost 28 this bike which is not from my fitness condition the other one was made uh, last week so my fitness condition is the same I rode in the morning last time and today uh, and uh, so basically it shouldn't be a big difference in the real sense I think I can push this bike and this result more than today but last week I felt that I almost was on the limit so I don't think I could improve that time this was my feeling last time today my feeling was that I could push but I felt really slow even though the feeling on this bike is much more uh, alive than uh, on the 29er so um, anyway this is for the debate which uh, a few years ago was uh, a really big deal about uh, 26 versus 27 and 27 versus 29 and uh, the prices and uh, blah 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 all those crap which today is not uh, that more important but uh, when uh, it all comes about street racing as you can see these these uh, guys here these uh, street fighters on the motors it is uh, actually non-significant the speed which you can uh, gain on a 29er in a city like Bucharest which don't have that much elevation climbing for uh, those who are passionate about that but it has a lot of traffic it has a lot of uh, I don't know what's this called this crap which protect the pedestrians which uh, you have to jump and uh, if you can bunny hop is not a problem on 26 or on 29 but it comes about um, the advantage which uh, I feel on 26 in traffic jumping that uh, I don't know what's called slaloming and uh, defending myself on uh, my mistakes because uh, so there are four uh, separate separate arguments which uh, I tend to put on the 26 over the 29 so yeah the fourth which is uh, the safety how safe you feel on the bike I feel much more safe if I do a uh, mistake on 26 rather than 29 because on 29 if you lose the front 
your goodbye if it's on a, on a curve even the back wheel can be a big problem when you are lean and uh, you try to take a curve on uh, the percentage a percentage from the entire uh, street let's say or uh, section you ride uh, looked from the above you occupy a narrower portion on 26 because you are lower to the ground you can place the wheels on the exterior or on the apex and you can let to the cars or the pedestrians or the void uh, more space so in my opinion this bike is not outdated this is the reason or the title I should uh, place for this video for you guys who ride something else or like uh, my friend who works at the bike shop and uh, rides also the Polar X and uh, other four crosses you are a real rider in my opinion because you know about bikes and uh, who doesn't get one of these they're alive there are uh, as you can see on my stats you can do your own stats if uh, you feel that uh, this is not accurate but even then if you obtain a two kilometers difference and uh, be reasonable don't uh, race your uh, fucking carbon bike with carbon wheels against a junk uh, polar x stock or a umf hardy or something like this be reasonable also considering the prices and uh, you'll see that uh, two kilometers per hour average is uh, actually a big thing and if uh, you can uh, also accomplish even a smaller margin so in this term i uh, highly appreciate those who do this thing still for uh, this kind of purpose street riding town forest flat forest jumps all around bike like uh, if a motorcycle rider would want to join us uh, and you have to recommend him a bike i think a four cross with a big fork or an adjustable fork like uh, this is u-turn but i converted it in a stiffer u-turn without the possibility to adjust it anymore until i uh, readapt it because it's uh, reversible i rather uh, consider to recommend him an aggressive 26 pair because uh, also if i uh, i'll be or i would be into motorcycles and uh, i'll ask his uh, advice let's be honest i wouldn't buy four motorcycles at and a Panigal V4S uh, and a S1000 uh, RRM power and uh, a an, uh, Fireblade SP and uh, the latest 
Kawasaki 40th anniversary, which is badass and looks fucking cool. So, eh, oh yeah, and a, a uh, SMC 450, and the list goes on. You know. So, if you had to buy one motorcycle, I think uh, you could go for a 600, and uh, the rest is uh, details. But uh, I think like this would sound um, an advice from them, from who knows this uh, topic. And uh, I doubt that uh, they would uh, would recommend a Yamaha R7, which is uh, compared to R6, or a I don't know what's that called from Kawasaki, or uh, a 1000 to cook your balls in the city and to just uh, shift the first and second in the town and to have all that wear on the tire without feeling anything and uh, just pushing occasionally on the highway or uh, on the curves to be just a fucking noob and to risk, to push too much. So, if there would be just one bike, that's uh, my opinion, buy a four cross, mount a optimum fork for the frame, or a big fork, so it would be, an aggressive hard tail and uh, have fun ignore those uh, performers and these Instagram influencers who post either road bikes carbon aero road bikes either uh, ultra lightweight cross country either uh, downhill in the city jumping from this I don't know or just from stairs but don't uh, servicing their suspension their bearings and so on but they are on downhill and there is written Fox big Fox 40 Kashima and they are uh, you know the biggest and the best and the best Ignore, ignore those trends, take a bike which is alive and uh, ride it fast.